Hello and welcome to our third Facebook Live show, Kicking the Tires. I'm Will Dron, acting editor of driving.co.uk. And uh, in pre-satnav days, when I was too proud to look at the map, I once went through a phase of uh, always ending up on the road to Swindon. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Okay, uh, and I'm James Mills, and uh, my claim to fame is that I once uh, taught the Stig everything he knows about driving. Yeah, well, that's just as well, because <laughs> in terms of chat, similar. Oh, okay. Uh, each Thanks week all. we've got a celebrity guest, um, <coughs> and it fills me with unbridled joy to introduce <laughs> Spandau Ballet drummer and uh, massive car nut John Keeble. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Good Thank evening, you very much. wherever you are in the world. Um, <laughs> yeah. And right. I've always uh, harboured a pathological hatred of Swindon. Oh, no. <laughs> Since we lost in the 1969 final. Oh, dear. Oh, well. <laughs> well, you're talking football. I'm completely out of my yeah, bet. Already. Absolutely. <laughs> all, all, all it's the last same. reference. It is great to have you here, John. Uh, you're our uh, first pop star, but, or is it rock star? I think I'm too old now to be a pop star. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, rock star's fine, thank you. Okay, <laughs> how did you get into into drumming in the first place and how did the sort of Spandau come about? Well, it was quite easy for me. Uh, when I was about 10, I wanted to play football, play cricket or play drums. That seemed to be the, the way out. So uh, uh, drums is the only thing I ever got paid for. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I loved music. So, you know, my first kits were just collections of annuals and you know, to bits of dowel. And then I bumped into uh, well, most of Spandau in the school music room in 1976. So right. you go right back with the guys. Yeah. So you're all well, schoolmates. Yeah. So I've known Spandau, yeah, it's actually 40 years this December. Yeah. Drummers tend to get less attention than other band members. Is <laughs> that is that ever irritated you? Uh, no. I, I, me personally, no. I've got the biggest gong. I've got the most microphones. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy in my skin. I. I it, I think it would terrify me being, you know, out front yeah. with, with nothing in front of me. Yeah. Um, I've done it a few times, but uh, yeah, that, that's a different gig. Uh, you've been fortunate, um, I suppose, to have some really interesting cars over the year. You've had a, a really <laughs> fascinating, eclectic collection. <laughs> Your first one wasn't so glam, though. It was an Escort van, wasn't it? Yeah, rule one of rock and roll, never buy a van. It was dark blue, and I think it's, it's certainly featured in the Janet Street Porter documentary about us. I bought it off my, uh, off, off my dad's firm uh, for 100, 100 pounds, I think. Yeah, yeah. 100 yeah. pounds. <laughs> what can you get for 100 pounds these days? And then, uh, then I, I left, the, left the bank and I still had the van and I phoned up my insurance company. What are you now? I said, oh, I'm a musician. Um. I mean, yeah, obviously <laughs> before, yeah. And I phoned them, they phoned me back before lunchtime and said, we're not covering you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks yeah. for the business. So, yeah. Goodbye. After that, it was a couple of Cortinas. Yeah, Mark ones. Um, yeah, one was a GT. Um, mine was mine was dark blue again with a sort of gold stripe that someone had applied. Um, the GT was nice. I mean, mm. it's the only time wiring has ever really foxed me because um, I, I wanted to. I couldn't work out. You could either have the heating on or the cassette player. Right. It was one or the other. So. Uh, me and Gary Kemp used to drive around in it, very cold. Very but, cold but, with all the music but, coming but, out. Did you, never, did you never fix it then? No, I, it was, never got I, to I took the dash it. off and it, there was so much wiring that I nearly said botched then. Uh, <laughs> adjusted wiring and it was like, no, it's best left alone. The second call to you know, if you turned all the lights on, the battery would go dead in about a minute and a half. And it had a red light to illuminate the rusty diff at the back. Nice. Ah. Nice. <laughs> and uh, and sort of flock door cards and a fur headlining. Oh, tasteful. Beautiful. What do you Very want for 120 quid? Yeah. Did you get some dice as well? Now, now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I always carried a hammer. That was when you could carry a hammer because the starter motor wouldn't engage properly, so you had to give it a tap and uh, to start the car. Beautiful. So where did, the, where did the thing for Lotus sports cars come how, how soon I, after the GT Cortina? I was recounting my, my dream cars earlier, and uh, you know it was a Europa, a, a Ferrari Dino, and, or a Lamborghini Miura, and they're mm. all mid-engined. Mm. And, I, and I think, you know, Colin Chapman, who I never met, was five foot eight and a half, so am I. I just fitted his cars well, and of the dream cars, that's the one I could afford, you know, Europa. and it cost me. Three and a half grand. You had it in the JPS livery uh, as I well. Mean, I mean, I had to check the number plate because that's 
absolutely my car. Wow. The wheels went porous eventually. An um, incredible, I mean, that must have been um, such so a like, rare car on the well, road, it, even when it still looks day. wonderful. And as, as far as I know, it's the first aero device on a car, which is that sort of bit of plastic or, you know, a, a front spoiler. Mm. I used to have a bag of sand in the front as well, just to keep the front end. Yeah, smart <laughs> sort of sky. Sky. A lot of drivers did the it, same it, it in that era. It was a little scallop streak, um, but, but very visceral. You know, you were right by the engine, you were right, the steering was, was brilliant. Mm. There was no weight on it. I mean, you know, often you used to quip, you know, the first, first metal they'll hit if you get T-boned in the Europa is uh, <laughs> your wristwatch um, or your feelings if you're unlucky. <laughs> The, the only time I've been let down by a Lotus um, is the Sunbeam. Um, I had a uh, Lotus Sunbeam and uh, we'd been to Paul Ricard to see the Grand Prix, Lee and I, and I dropped her off at the airport with Charles de Gaulle or something and then I was getting a ferry back to Southern Ireland, so we were living in Dublin at the time, and then I had a gig in a couple of days time, so fine, I you know, dropped her off and the the taco just went dead and everything right. went dead and I coasted up. This is before the interweb net or yeah. mobile phones, kids. You, know you mean, can't YouTube it. Long <laughs> while ago. Pull over near a I pulled box. over and in my bad French, some bloke transported me and the car to the local garage, which was by now shut, and left me there <laughs> uh, in some sort of French village. And, and you know, I've got to say, you know, the youth who stopped on his bike and said, you're right, mate. You know, he didn't say it like that. He said it in French. <laughs> Savar. Um, yeah. No, not very Savar at all. No. Yeah. Um, he went home, got his father's car and took me to a hotel. It was brilliant. You know. Nice. Uh, next morning, they were very jolly, you know, opened up the bonnet and went, ooh, la, la. Uh, it's a Lotus engine. Yeah. It's a, it, not seen one of these before. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of head scratching. Um, yeah, uh, it turned out it was a cracked distributor cap, but it's right. under all the carbs and you know it's a slant engine. And suddenly I heard signs of life. You know it's oh, great. I can catch the ferry, and uh, I turned it off and started walking away. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Turns out it's lunchtime in France. <laughs> that's sacrosanct. That's it. We've got to go and get some mate. wine, yeah, some cheese, some wine, cheese, and uh, everything. French. It's like, oh no, mate, I'm not. Gonna. So you know, again, <laughs> bless them. They gave me some tools, yeah. and I reassembled the you know carburetor, trumpets, and the air filter, and what have you, and got it going. Managed to catch a ferry, got to Dublin, and then rendezvous with the rest of the band, and we flew to this gig, which is called uh, Live Aid. That was it. I've heard of that. Blimey. Yeah. At the moment, I drive a Porsche, and it's, it's difficult to see past that. Mm. Uh, Porsche does tick more boxes, really. And, you know, for my lifestyle, it's better. Uh, I can get more shopping in it at Waitrose. <laughs> <laughs> you could also get some shopping in a Renault 5 GT Turbo, which was one of your cars <laughs> at one point as well. Yes, <laughs> I, I bought that new. That's um, a cult car. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Tungsten Grey. And, and I, we were talking about weight earlier, and it weighed nothing, apparently. It weighed like 870 kilos. Lovely car. I mean, the doors were made out of air. I mean, a real <laughs> tin. I mean, you could push them in. I was quite religious about letting it run for a few minutes right. because the oil circulates around the turbo. Yeah. Yes, I, I used to fix cars. And, you, know, cars you knew the my, tricks. My earlier cars, you know, they didn't go. If you didn't get under them and fix yeah. them, they didn't go. So, uh, so I know a little bit about cars. Um, I finally sold it um, on eBay. Uh, and the turbo had gone. But again, it was a, it was a, a very straight car. You know, mm. I'd owned it from new and done tons of miles. And I think Renault offered me eight pence or something as a, <laughs> as a trade in on the, on the 182. And um, I got more than that on eBay. Can, to, you, yeah. to can very, you guess how many are you, left on the road now? Um, I can't, but you know, I, I sold it to a, a guy who's probably handy and he'll probably put a new turbo on it. And yep. actually he's got a very nice, you know, classic motor, you know, yep. for, yeah. um, well, I mean, obviously more than Renault were going to give me, but. Well, uh, there are 378 left licensed on the road. Really? So it's not a lot, is it? 378. Not very much, but you wish you, know, you kept you, it now. Well, sort of, but I think there is a, a law of 
that says as soon as you get it out of your loft or you sell it, then it becomes worth money, you know. Uh, yes, the uh, law of sod, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, don't uh, get rid I, of the box stuff. Uh, no, I mean, I've, I've got no plan so to do. Um, it, as I say, it fulfills a lot of criteria. And, and I think, you know, if buy stuff you like, you know, I think yeah. that applies to most, most things. Buy stuff you like, not that's going to appreciate. Yeah. Um, we have got a question. Suzanne Higgins would like to know, um, uh, you can probably guess what this is going to be. Uh, <laughs> when are you getting back with the boys? <laughs> uh, when are we getting back together? I've, I've seen most of the boys in the last few weeks, so uh, we're in the politics phase. Right. right. <laughs> so that's not a no? I mean, that's, that... well, it's, it's certainly never a no. No, of course we will never get say back never. together. Great. I've got a, I've got a little um, a small game called Rockstar Cars that I've lined up. So what I want you to do is have a look at the picture and uh, you have to match the uh, rock star <laughs> with the car. Now, I've got a feeling this is going to be actually quite easy for you. Well, 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 it's only one American car there. So I would go with Brad from Aerosmith and the Chevelle. Mm -hmm. I'll go with Mick Fleetwood and the Bentley and I'll go with... John O and the uh, Austin Seven. Oh, are you sure, you know John O? Are you sure? I don't know, but he's the first person I ever saw on a stage when the support bands of Slade were a nice. little known outfit called Geordie. Right. Uh, so Brian Johnson is the first front man I ever saw. I, I, see, I, I've got him down as an Austin Seven man. Okay, let's have a look. No, uh, <sighs> Mick Fleetwood's got the Austin Seven. My old man's got one of those as well, so uh, really? he's got great taste, I reckon. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you to all of our viewers for asking questions. I really appreciate that. And uh, keep up to date with Sunday Times Driving and Clarkson's latest columns, <laughs> speaking of which, on the Sunday Times website and on driving.co.uk.